Howdy, it's Kyle talking about the Caribbean and when it gets cold, a lot of people start thinking about going down south to the tropics to get away from the cold and for a lot of people from the US, Canada or the UK, the Caribbean is a top destination. So you look at this map and you might be like, how do I decide which island I want to go to? There's Saint this, Saint that, English speaking, Spanish speaking, French speaking, all inclusive resorts, luxury resorts, tropical rainforest, desert, casinos, celebrity sightings. How do I decide? So in this video, I'm going to go over many islands in the Caribbean to help you decide which might be the best island for you to visit based on your personal preferences. And even if you have no intention of visiting the Caribbean, think of this video as kind of an educational overview of the region. And in an attempt to keep this video from going on too long, I'm only going to be discussing the Lesser Antilles. So the Greater Antilles are Cuba, the island of Hispaniola, which is Haiti and Dominican Republic, as well as Puerto Rico and Jamaica. So these are the larger islands with populations in the millions and they have big cities and there's a lot of stuff going on that isn't just tourism. So for this video, I'll be discussing just the Lesser Antilles, the smaller islands between the Greater Antilles and South America. Anguilla is a very small British overseas territory that is well known for having a lot of fantastic beaches. There's a lot of beautiful beaches ringing the island, which is basically one giant chunk of limestone. There are very few people that actually live on the island, and the largest population center is simply called the Valley. But there really isn't much else there, so don't expect a lot of shopping or bars and nightlife kind of stuff. You go to Anguilla to sit on the beach, just chill out and relax. However, do note that Anguilla is one of the most expensive islands in the region to visit and it is definitely geared towards more luxury tourism. Antigua and Barbuda is the name of the country and it is an English-speaking independent nation. Antigua is by far the larger of the two and is by far the one where most people go to to visit. It's well known for having a ton of beaches, plus a lot of great white sand beaches all around the island. But it also has a pretty cool capital city with some old historic buildings, some nice colonial fort kind of stuff, and there's also an area called Nelson's Dockyard, which is an old British fort as well. But the main reason you want to go to Antigua is for all those wonderful beaches. So Antigua and Barbuda is a great country to go to if the main thing you want to do is beach, but you also do want to see a little bit of history and Caribbean culture. It's one of the more popular islands to visit, and it's above average in terms of cost relative to the rest of the region. Aruba is one of the more highly visited islands in the region. It's pretty well known for having a pretty good nightlife scene, a lot of bars and nightclubs. They have casinos there, so it's a little more activity oriented in terms of the fun nightlife kind of stuff. And as a result, it does tend to skew a little younger in terms of the people that visit. So again, with being more of a party type atmosphere, a lot of times people want to go, especially when it is busy. So it is a little more hopping in the clubs kind of stuff. So. If the main thing you want to do is chill out and relax, well, Aruba probably isn't the best choice for you. One thing to note about Aruba that might be a little surprising is that it's a desert island. When you think of the tropics, you might think of lush tropical rainforest, but that's not the case in Aruba. It's a tropical desert. Barbados is the farthest island away if you're approaching from the U.S. or Canada. And it's also one of the most highly populated of the Lesser Antilles with almost 300,000 people living there. The capital city is pretty vibrant, a lot of things going on there with culture and history, great food. And it's the biggest city in the region, so it also feels like a much larger city, whereas most of the other islands have a kind of a small town as its capital. There are fantastic beaches all around the island. You have ones that are kind of secluded, some that are pretty busy. You can kind of get what you want in Barbados, everything from high-end luxury resorts to mid-range stuff to Airbnb dives. There's not much in the way of interior tropical rainforest or any kind of adventurous outdoor stuff. But if you want the beach with some culture, it's one of the best islands you can visit in the region. However, do note two things. One, it is very busy. It's one of the most popular islands in the region, so don't expect small crowds. And it's also pretty expensive. It's one of the more expensive islands to visit in the region, but it is pretty popular and pretty expensive for a region. It's a great place. The Cayman Islands are a group of primarily three islands that are pretty close to the U.S. and quite a short flight from Miami. And because it's so easy to get there from the U.S., Grand Cayman especially is very popular with American tourists. The Caymans are a British overseas territory, but they do feel a little more American than British. And just like Anguilla, the main thing to do there is sit on the beach and relax. 
although there is a little bit more urban and city type stuff in the Caymans than Anguilla. So there's a little more of a bar and nightlife type scene, but nothing like Aruba. There are three main islands that make up the Cayman Islands, and the vast majority of the visitors go to Grand Cayman, which is the biggest one, and that's where the main airport is. The western portion of Grand Cayman is really busy, but the eastern half is much more laid back and secluded. But if you really want to get away from it all, you want to go to either Little Cayman or Cayman Brock. But that will involve taking another little flight to get there, so most people pretty much just stay on Grand Cayman. Curacao is a former Dutch colony close to the coast of South America, not too far from Aruba. And even though it's a former Dutch colony, everybody there speaks English. Curacao is a great island to visit if the main thing you want to see is Caribbean culture. There's a really cool, vibrant downtown in the capital city, really cool architecture, some cool history and museums. And there's also a lot more stuff going on there than tourism, so you get kind of a real Caribbean island feel to parts of Curacao. And there are some great beaches there as well, but if the main thing you want to see is the beach, the main thing you want to do is hang out, chill out with a fruity drink on the beach, well, Curacao's probably not going to be your top choice. And just like Aruba, it is a tropical desert, so don't expect lush tropical rainforest. Dominica is a very different island than the rest and offers you quite a bit of different experience than the other islands. You don't go to Dominica if the main thing you want to do is sit on the beach and drink a pina colada. If you're going to Dominica, you're probably bringing hiking boots. It's nicknamed a nature island and it is gorgeous. Pretty much the entire island is lush tropical rainforest, very mountainous, a lot of great, pretty hardcore strenuous hiking on the island. The capital of Roseau has a pretty cool, genuine Caribbean feel to it. Because you don't have a lot of cruise ships there, you don't have a lot of regular kind of tourists that are going to the beach and drinking fruity drinks, it's a much different experience. A lot fewer people go to Dominica and as a result, it's much less touristy and much more genuine. But with all that being said, most people go to the Caribbean to relax and sit on the beach. There are a few decent beaches on the island, but most people are going there for adventure. The first time that we went to the Caribbean, we went to Grenada. And the reason why we went there is because we feel it has the best mix of things that were important for us to see. There's some great authentic Caribbean culture as the entire island isn't dominated by tourism. There are some wonderful white sand beaches, some that can be pretty busy, some that are pretty secluded. And there's a beautiful mountainous interior rainforest that is great for hiking and some great waterfalls as well. There are also no large high-rise hotels on the beach. It's just low-rise places and everything is just a little more laid back there. It's not one of the most heavily visited islands in the region and therefore it's also one of the lesser expensive ones as well. However, if the main thing you want to do is just sit on the beach and relax and not do much else, then Grenada probably isn't the top choice for you. If you want that good, rounded experience of a really cool, charming capital city, some great authentic Caribbean culture, some wonderful beaches, and some beautiful rainforest, then Grenada is what I highly recommend. St. Barthélemy, or St. Bars, as everyone calls it, is a very small French-speaking island. It's most well known for being very expensive and offering a very high-end luxury experience. In fact, I believe it's the most expensive island in the region to visit, except for some of the private islands. You have some really expensive high-end shops like Gucci and Cartier and kind of stuff. So if you rent to that, it's a great place. And there's a pretty good chance you'll see some celebrities. However, there isn't a lot of great authentic Caribbean culture there. There isn't a lot of history there. And the downtown of the capital city isn't really all that exciting. There are some wonderful white sand beaches. Some that can be pretty busy and some can be kind of secluded. There is some decent scenery there, but it's not somewhere you're going to go to look at the lush tropical rainforest. For me, if you're interested in primarily seeing the beach and you can afford it, I would recommend Anguilla over St. Bart's, but if the high-end shopping and possibly seeing a celebrity is important to you, then St. Bart's will be the one. St. Kitts and Nevis is the name of the English-speaking independent nation that consists of the islands of St. Kitts and Nevis. St. Kitts is going to be a lot busier. Nevis will be a lot more laid back. And this is another great choice if you're interested in a pretty well-rounded experience. There are some great beaches there. The downtown capital city has some interesting Caribbean culture, and there's a pretty cool interior mountainous rainforest as well. St. Kitts has a handful of pretty large hotels that are close to each other on a pretty popular beach. Nevis has almost exclusively very small properties and far fewer people. So if you visit St. Kitts, at least spend one day in Nevis. My wife and I went there. We spent a week in Nevis and one day in St. Kitts. Most people do it the opposite, but try to do both if you visit this country. 
St. Lucia is another one that offers a pretty well-rounded Caribbean experience. There are some fantastic white sand beaches there, a gorgeous interior rainforest, and an okay capital city as well. So I would put St. Lucia in the same general category as Grenada and St. Kitts, but St. Lucia does have the best beaches of all three. And I would also say the options for outdoor activities are greater on St. Lucia than they are on either Grenada or St. Kitts. But do note, it is going to be a little more expensive than either Grenada or St. Kitts. So you do get a pretty well-rounded experience, but it is one of the more above-average priced islands. St. Martin is a geographical oddity, and it is the smallest area of land in the world divided up between two countries. The western half is Dutch, although everybody speaks English, and the eastern half is French. I mean, everybody speaks English there, too. And it's also the most party-oriented island in the region, so it's got a lot of great clubs, nightlife, some strip joints, some casinos. It's just a place you go to party. So if partying is the most important thing you want to do in the Caribbean, this is a really good choice for you, but there are other places you can get your party on that are better to visit than St. Martin. The culture there is very blah. There isn't much history. It's pretty much all new construction, giant hotels, and it's kind of a mess, really. So pretty much you go to St. Martin if you want to party and everything else is secondary. So because of that, if you're American, I can't really recommend going there. You can go to Key West or New Orleans or South Padre Island and party in the warmth without having to go so far and experience partying that really isn't any better than what you can get in the U.S. For Canadians and Europeans, it's of course going to be different because you don't have a Key West or New Orleans or Miami in your country. So you kind of have to go to a foreign country to get your tropical party on. But for Americans, go somewhere else. St. Vincent and the Grenadines is another independent nation toward the southern end of the Caribbean chain. It's the poorest country in the region and the only one that I would call, you know, dare I say third world, but it is pretty poor compared to the rest of the islands. With the huge exception of the Grenadines, which is a chain of a bunch of islands that are all pretty well off, including some of the most exclusive places in the world. It doesn't have the best history and culture, doesn't have the best beaches, and doesn't have the best interior rainforest. So as a result, you don't have as many visitors going there, but it's also a lot cheaper than the rest of the islands. So when you talk about it might be a little bit poor, might be a little bit rough around the edges, not the best beaches, not the best interior for some folks, you know, I'm not going there, but for other folks, that might be the top of my list to get away from places that other people go to. St. Vincent isn't one of the best islands in the Caribbean for any particular category, so it's below average for history, culture, capital city, and beaches. The Turks and Caicos are a chain of many islands. Some are the Turk Islands and some are the Caicos. No one island in the chain is so great to visit that you want to spend your entire time there, but going amongst all these islands, you probably have to have your own yacht or sailboat or be taking little crop dust or flights between them. And that's especially true when you consider that the main airport is on Providencialis. I'm not sure if that's how it's pronounced, but this is just an island where it's shoulder-to-shoulder high-rise hotels, and it's just really crowded and doesn't really offer much of an authentic Caribbean culture. And there also isn't much in the way of great scenery, and there's certainly no rainforest there. But all of the islands in the chain, other than Providencialis, are much less visited and great places to go to get away from it all. But again, it can be a little difficult to get to those other islands because they're not that close to where you can take a little water tax like you can between St. Kitts and Nevis. And the last islands I'm going to mention in this video are the Virgin Islands, some of which are the British Virgin Islands and some of which are the U.S. Virgin Islands. The U.S. Virgin Islands are very heavily visited. It's primarily a cruise ship destination for day trippers. And as a result, it can be pretty chaotic and maybe not what you're expecting for a relaxing tropical vacation. But it doesn't really offer a great, well-rounded experience. St. John is a beautiful island and a wonderful national park, but to get there is another small flight and you might not want to be doing that within your trip. The only real reason I can see people going to the U.S. Virgin Islands is if you're American and you don't have a passport, or maybe you're on the run from the law and can't get a passport, but I really don't see much reason for Canadians or Europeans to be going there. But if you want to be in the U.S. and drive on the left side of the road, well, go for it. The British Virgin Islands, on the other hand, I think are a much better group of islands to visit. With the big exception that it's kind of like the Turks and Caicos where you really want to have your own sailboat or yacht to do some island hopping. But unlike Turks and Caicos, you can spend your time on just one of the British Virgin Islands and not really feel you have to go to another one. Although it would be best if you did. But even so, I wouldn't put the British Virgin Islands at the top of the best islands to visit because, again, I think to get the best experience out of it, 
you really have to island hop and most people aren't going to be doing that. So those are my recommendations on the best islands to visit in the Caribbean. And as you can tell from this video, I'm not working for one of the travel guys. I'm not trying to make all these islands look great because they don't all offer the same experiences based on your personal preferences. So in summary, if the main thing you want to do is just hit the beach and do nothing else, I want to sit and relax. I have a stressful job. Just leave me alone. Anguilla. If the main thing you want to do is sit on the beach and relax and not do much else, but maybe one day every trip go into the capital city to see some Caribbean culture, but you don't really care at all about tropical rainforest, Antigua. If the main thing you want to do is sit on the beach and relax and not do much else, but maybe go into the tropical rainforest one day, but maybe you don't care about the capital city, St. Lucia. If the main thing you want to do is see some Caribbean culture, a nice capital city, see some good beaches and some tropical rainforest as well, Grenada. If the main thing you want to do is see the tropical rainforest, do some hiking and some good Caribbean culture, but maybe you don't care too much about the beach, Dominica. And maybe you're not quite sure what you want. You know you want to see the beach, you want to see some Caribbean culture, maybe party a little bit, maybe go into the outdoors a little bit, but you're not quite sure, Barbados. I hope you found the information in this video useful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve and consider subscribing to this channel if you're interested in nerdy geography stuff. Usually I'm talking about the US, but I dabble into Canada, Mexico, or the Caribbean, and I'm talking a lot about cross-country road tripping in the US, comparing and contrasting cities and states in various categories with lots of geographical stuff from a nerdy perspective. But yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King, signing out.